Hi, I'm making a short video to show you how to access your grades and comments once you receive them back. Um, basically, what's going to happen is that you're going to get a grade up here uh, for your quiz, uh, for the forum response, and for the reading response. And um, let's see, yeah, I'm in here as a student, good. So you can technically just click on this. Uh, the reading response and go to the grade book. That's definitely one way to do it. And here you can now access the inline feedback and you can also view the graded rubric. And same thing goes for the, the, the discussion forum. And as a reminder, the discussion forum is graded solely on your responses. Um, while it is good to post something so that your peers can read it and comment on it, uh, you, you can only get a grade by responding to your peers since that's what the forum is. It's a good idea to post something even if um, you miss the Dropbox deadline though because you can get into the forum and you can make that grade happen. Um, when you go into the feedback for the responses, you'll note the rubric I'm using to grade the assignment. You should definitely, um, you know, look to see how you can get these comments, these boxes, sorry, to the left uh, filled out more often than not. And then you'll also be able to open up the document. Uh, there's about 25 plus students in the class, so I'm probably not going to be going too deeply into the comments, but I do like to put some comments on uh, the writing, give you some tips for how to improve it. One thing you'll notice when you get into the Feedback Studio is that the plagiarism checker will be uh, selected, and whatever already exists on the internet or in other papers, etc., is going to be highlighted. And if that bothers you to have that in the background, you can get rid of that. These are the comments I give back to you. That's the comment box that needs to be selected. So if you don't see comments, um, that means that the uh, little comment box is not selected. And yeah, I do note that on our end, the teacher's end, we can see when you're actually going back and reading comments and looking at comments. And if you don't do it, then I just stop commenting on your work. Um, but yeah, basically I give you some comments about how to think about the grammar, how to improve that. It'll take you to a website that is free and that I've always, that I've been using now forever, um, the OWL. And so you'll be able to search. Sometimes it'll take you right to the page, but sometimes I, um, you know, they keep changing the URLs. But you could basically go to any um of their links here and you know look up uh, commas or something like that to see how to correct what went wrong there. Same thing for any MLA information. I think this one does work. It takes you right to the MLA page. And here at the MLA page you can look up how to cite specific kinds of sources, overall guides, etc. Um, and there's even some samples down over here by the end how to uh and there's a whole like powerpoint if if you'd like to see that okay so yeah just briefly the assignment was um a starter in the class to get us talking i mean first of all to get you to see how important it is to be reading the instructions i wanted you to do a six paragraph response where the intro explained the three concepts and the three body paragraphs, sorry, four body paragraphs went through each of these examples below with a conclusion that said what you'd learned, if anything new uh, or, or anything. But yeah, so the concepts were cheating, which is just a flat out taking of information from online sources or from peers and pretending like it's your own, non-attribution. And the key here is really uh, the lack of quotation marks. It's when you take language word for word from a source and just forget to put quotation marks around it. You're citing the source, showing me where it comes from, otherwise it would be cheating because you'd just be taking the information without quotation marks, not telling me where it's from, but you just don't have the quotation marks. 
and then patch writing where um, something seems to be copied and pasted from a source and then the words are just moved around to make it seem like it's original, like it's your writing, but it's actually a form of plagiarism, which would result in a zero and all these other things, uh, consequences, academic death penalty, as uh, Howard describes it. But yeah, this first example is a clear-cut example of um, patch writing, adult criminals and youth involved in illegal activities, Adults and youth involved in criminal activity have reported that guns are easy to obtain, have reported that guns are not difficult to obtain. I mean, it's the exact same sentence structure with just some words sw uh, switched around. The second one is my example of non-attribution. Uh, no, actually, this is also patch writing. I wanted to, you know, talk about the kind of subtlety in patch writing where um, it's not difficult to see tomorrow's sophisticated computers rapidly processing complex data from animals and transmitting it in a useful form to humans via an earpiece. That same sentence structure carries over to Lord and Clayton theorize that the supercomputers of tomorrow will be able to transmit comprehensible information from animals to humans through small earpieces. It's the same sentence structure. It just got carried over, so, you know, the student hasn't actually written this in their own language. They copied and pasted the sentence and moved some words around, which is patch writing. More subtle, but still patch writing. And still uh, illegal, still plagiarism. This is the more cut-and-dried example, where everything from uh, players of violent video games all the way through the word acts, players of violent video games all the way through the word acts is taken word for word, without the quotation marks. That's uh, non-attribution. So you know that there is a citation. So you know it's not cheating. We know it's coming from the source, but it's taken word for word without quotation marks. Here there's no citation. Exact same thing. No mention of the source. And therefore that's cheating. Okay. So I will be returning these shortly. I've been working my way through it. Um, the other way that you can actually access things I just want to call your attention to the Dropbox, the quizzes. Like I said, the quizzes um, now have been returned with um, the actual scores in them. And you can go back to your submissions and you can review questions and answers. I wasn't entirely happy with how one question came out on this quiz, but everybody did fairly well. Everybody did pretty good on it. So, um, so yeah, you know, you can see the answers here now. Um, where is it? Yeah, this one's uh, actually not correct. I don't know, shoot me an email if, um, if you think that you should get the point for this one because she didn't technically die at 50. I was just a blip. She lived for 50 more years. I mean, she would have had to have finished her dissertation at, what, 22 years old? I mean, become a doctor at 23, 24 when she's, before she's had the child? That makes no sense. So she, it's 50 years from the time that she has the child. So for 25 years, the child's alive. And for 25 more years, she continues her life um, after the child. Ish. Anyway. He does say half a century, so most of you probably just kind of glommed onto that. Okay, cool. So uh, do let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah. All right.